Hi, this is Ruth Brown. I'm on the Nokia stand at Network X in Paris, and I'm joined by Hurt Heineck. Welcome. Good morning. Um, today we're talking about SDN automation. Um, the theme of this year's Network X uh, conference is telco to techco, and we're talking about um, simplifying and streamlining things for operators. I wonder if you could tell me how this is going to help SDN and automation. Yeah, it's very clear that nowadays automation is key for operators to really deploy in an efficient way their network. It has a couple of advantages, really. It's driving down the OPEX. It allows you to introduce services much faster. It makes sure that you are human error free. So there are quite some advantages when you do automation. So if you look back a couple of years ago, we were basically doing manual work. It was like scripting. And we have evolved towards intent-based automation. Intent-based automation basically means that you simply say, this is my business object, objective. You put it into intent. This will be pushing it to the network. And then through some cycles, so closed loop automation, it will check whether everything is OK. It will auto-restore, so it's massively automating. If you put on top of that some AI ML capabilities, then you're basically evolving towards a autonomous system. So the Nirvana eventually at one point in time will be everything will be automatic. The customer will not need to do anything and the whole network will be healed, instantiated automatically. Now we are not exactly there yet. But in order to be able to do all those things, it is important that you have an open API, that you have access towards the network resources and that you have access towards the data resources because that access is key for you to be able to leverage that data and to develop some AI ML applications. So that's basically something that we are doing from an Altiplano perspective. From the ground up, it has been designed to be cloud native and at the same time providing that open API to others in order to accommodate their customized automation. And that's really what we're bringing on the table. Altiplano has been deployed now with more than 100 customers across the globe. And the fact that we have the flexibility, the openness to provide those interfaces to make sure that you can automate has been one of the key decision factors for customers selecting Altiplano. So Hurt, when we spoke last year at NetworkX, you just launched Altiplano and you were giving the opportunity for operators to automate and analyze their networks through these new apps. So I wonder if you can share with me what's new in the marketplace. So yes, last year we basically launched the Altiplano application marketplace. And what I'm very proud of today is that I can announce that we have the first third party who has developed an application on top of our Altiplano platform. So we have created the Altiplano marketplace as a open framework on which an operator, a third party or Nokia can develop specific applications. So we have developed or provided an SDK, we have a development portal. All of these are the tools which are necessary to be able to develop those apps. The app that we are launching together with Condor Networks, Condor Networks is a third party who has developed the app, is basically some enhanced wholesale capabilities. With this enhanced wholesale, we are completing our portfolio solution as far as wholesale and neutral host is concerned. Now a, a wholesale customer, as well as a neutral host, they can address all sorts of tenants whether they are low-skilled, high-skilled, or medium-skilled. So that's very key. Last year, when we launched the marketplace, we introduced seven applications from Nokia. We are now adding four more applications from Nokia perspective, which has to do with the fact that you can do some preventive maintenance, you have better insights into the, your network, as well as you are leveraging some or creating some operational efficiencies. So Altiplano is a really great example about how we're using automation to cut through complexity. You've got a demo on your stand today, um, which is broadband network slicing. I wonder if you could share with me how you're also using this to cut through complexity and what gains you think the operator can have in terms of generating new revenue. Yeah, slicing is really an amazing tool. It's something which came from the 5G and it's obvious you would also apply it to fixed networks. And that's basically what we are doing. What is a slice? Let me take one step back for a moment. What is a slice? It basically says it's a entity, a virtual network across the network, spanning from access, transport, core of the network, where you are guaranteeing a certain performance, where you're guaranteeing quality of service uh, parameters. But on top of that, we are adding also in that slice the home networking, because it's all very nice that you have a very good and tangent, uh, strict quality of service on the core of the network. But on the access, if you basically, if my son is upstreaming a video 
and I can't access it, I have a problem. So the splice needs to be end-to-end. -end. Let me talk a bit about a couple of use cases you can bring to slicing. So one of the use cases is basically gaming. If you think about it, what you need as a gamer is you need the reasonable bandwidth, but more importantly, you need low latency. So you can set up an end-to-end -end slice to provide low latency for a gamer, so he can have the absolute best experience from a gaming perspective. You can set this up for an hour, three hours, a day, whatever you want, the duration of a game, whatever you want. Key in this element is really that you provide the low latency. This is something I can charge to a high core gamer, so they, they would be willing to pay. Now, frankly speaking, there's a bit of a limit as to how much an end user, a consumer, is willing to pay. So let me give another example where actually we believe somebody else would be paying for this. Mm -hmm. So I'm an employer of Nokia. I'm working from home two, di two, two days a week, basically. Now, working from home, my internet connection, it's all very fine, it all works perfectly. But once in a while, I have a customer call. And you know what? I have a Teams call, images freezes, it's not always working well. So that's the issue because I want to I have a flawless experience when I'm talking to the customer. So it is very plausible that my employer will basically pay an extra premium on top of my internet in order to make sure that this experience is flawless. Whether it's for the duration of the call, whether it's, let's say, a fixed fee per month in order to make sure that all my traffic would be perfect, that's up to the operator to work. But what I want to show with this is that as an operator, you're no longer limited to just asking money from the end consumer, but you need to involve and think about involving third parties to monetize your network. And I believe with something like slicing, this is a perfect opportunity to achieve this. Thank you, Herd. It's been great talking to you today, and I've really enjoyed hearing about the new opportunities for operators in the broadband network. Thank you. Thank you.